What is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Welcome to the Samsung Galaxy S8. Yes, you heard that right. The S8 versus the Galaxy S20 5G. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go. Now, the Galaxy S8 came out in 2017, and it was a very hot seller for Samsung. As a matter of fact, I still see people rocking the S8 out in public, as well as the S8 Plus. And here is the S20, which is seemingly the 2020 version of the Galaxy S8, a very similar body size, but with more screen on there. And so let's see, the Galaxy S20 boot up first over the S8, but this is a substantial more time of a boot up. So very fast update there when it comes to just turning on your device. And when it comes to biometrics, the Galaxy S8 was one of those phones that was kind of a jack of all trades. It has that fingerprint sensor in the back, which you could just swipe your finger over that camera lens to get a smudgy camera. So sometimes I didn't really like this placement, but it did work well and it's pretty accurate. I do like physical fingerprint sensors, however. You could also use iris face unlocking or 2D face unlocking with this device. So the S8 did have multiple ways, but um, the Galaxy S20 has the in-display fingerprint sensor. And so if we go ahead and unlock the Galaxy S20, you can see that the S20 definitely very fast as well. I find this way more convenient than the one on the back of the S8, and I personally prefer unlocking the S20 over the S8. It seems a little snappier and just in a better location. However, the face unlock is definitely a little bit better to me on the S8 with the iris unlocking versus just this 2D face unlock here. And so quickly confirming the software before the app test, you can see 1.0 versus 2.1 coupled with Android 9 for the Galaxy S8 and Android 10 here for the S20. I don't think we're gonna get Android 10 officially for the S8, but just look at the difference in the bezel. And here we are at the application speed test. So you can see everything closed out there for the right, everything closed out for the left, let's go into calendar, three, two, one. You can see the Galaxy S20 definitely faster. What about clock? Definitely faster for the Galaxy S20. Let's go into calculator. Definitely faster, weather on the right. Again, weather has ads, but still quicker on the S20. But keep in mind that the S8 is not a bad performer. It still actually works quite well, still functional in 2020. It's not a phone that you can stop using if you have one, it still works quite well. Even an application still works quite well, but the S25 G, once you get used to that 120 Hertz game over, you'll never want to look at a 60 Hertz again. It'll just look choppy. Let's go into Twitter. You can see that's faster for the Galaxy S20. And again, that scroll just looks choppy compared to the Galaxy S20 as expected. Let's go into Snapchat. Faster for the S20, and this is on the same Wi-Fi network. What about YouTube? We're gonna hop over to trending here. And you can see, just a smoother look when scrolling through virtually every application for the S20. Let's go into speed test. You can see far faster there. And let's come home. Let's go into Amazon. You can see Amazon far faster there. Now, does this really make a difference? This one to two second difference that you keep showing, Nick? And the answer to that question is, depends on how hard are you using your phone. If you rely on your phone a lot and you use it a lot, day to day, switching between these apps, flying through them, Two seconds per app makes a huge difference. You're just gonna feel like you can count on your phone to be fast anytime you need it. Whereas with the S8, you might sometimes be like, come on, like it just takes a second sometimes to open an application. Let's go into PUBG Mobile and see how this does perform. Now I will state one thing, it's not like this wasn't expected. You knew the S20 was going to be the faster phone, but you didn't know how much. And definitely I think if you add all these differences up, Overall, it's gonna feel like a blistering fast phone compared to the S8 that you were currently using if you decide to jump to this device. So the trade-in is probably worth it here. Now you can see S8 loading up still, far faster in the game. And not only that, it's gonna perform better because it has a 120 hertz display on there, which is gonna be excellent for the gaming experience. Let's go ahead and bring that one home. You've seen a little bit of a delay there coming home. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2 and see how they do perform. And you can see jumps way ahead there for the Galaxy S20 as expected. Let's hit play. And I think this is a great two year upgrade from the Galaxy S8, you know, well, it's about three now. We're in 20, 2020, this is 2017, but still, you know, it's a great upgrade because overall you're just getting an all around beast performer in a similar size body, in a similar shape as well. It's gonna feel very reminiscent of your S8 if you go here. Let's go into Mortal Kombat. 
and see how they do load this game up. Now, 5G is also a difference maker for the Galaxy S20, especially if you're in an area that does support it. Specifically, an urban area will probably give you the most benefit from that title. But if you're in an area that's rural, a suburban area that's way out in the country, um, that probably means absolutely nothing to you at this point. But you can see, graphically speaking, the it just loads up much faster here. And so if we ran like one of those gaming graphic tests, the Galaxy S20 would finish far faster than this Galaxy S8 over here. But again, you can see the S8 is doing well. It's still, it's still running these apps. So if you don't need all this stuff, the S8 still works fine. So at the end of this single round of apps, you can see pretty much everything is faster for the Galaxy S20 5G, and that's what you want to see. Now, four gigabytes of RAM, 12 gigabytes of RAM. Let's see if the RAM can hold everything on both phones. Pretty good so far. Let's come home here. And looks like we have to come from the side here. Okay, so let's see how the RAM does do in holding these applications. Four gigs over here, and we have 12 gigs, which is three times more RAM. Let's go into Mortal Kombat, and let's bring it home here for the Galaxy S20, and let's bring it home for the S8, and let's go into Dead Trigger. You can see that the Galaxy S20, a little snappier there to bring that one home. And let's come home here, and let's go into the PUBG Mobile. And you can see the S20 once again a little bit faster there. It does hang a little bit there on the landscape. And no, the auto rotate is not on. It just does that because it's defaulting to the landscape mode. Let's go into Geekbench 5. You can see the S20 pretty good there. Let's go into Pandora. You can see the S20 has to listen again, as does the S8. Let's go into eBay. And there you go with the reload for the S8. Let's go into Amazon. Again, with the S8 Reload, we don't even have to look at more. You can see right there, speed test a little faster on the right. YouTube, reload there for the Galaxy S8. So this is where that more RAM is effective. Now consider this, if you are doing multitasking, you have multiple windows open at once, this can make a big difference. Or if you're doing something very important on your phone, you don't have access to your laptop, having that extra RAM comes really in handy. It allows you to get that same type of performance you usually get from a laptop or PC. Let's head into calculator and you can see the Galaxy S20 first there clock. Yes, so S20's RAM difference is substantially noticeable. You will definitely feel it and you probably will enjoy it as well. So let's go to target.com here on both of them and you can see the S20 a little bit faster there. The Samsung browser is pretty smooth on both. Let's go into Amazon in the web browser. We did it in the app test already, but you can see over there, faster for the S20 5G. Let's head into Pinterest, and you can see faster there for the S20 5G. So not only does it have faster mobile, mobile, mobile performance, but it does have faster Wi-Fi performance as well. Let's head into TurboTax.com, see how this does do right here. And you can see definitely Faster for the S20, but not by a lot. So if you have a good Wi-Fi network, won't be a big difference. But let me show you something that will be a big difference. Let's go to walmart.com right here. And let me scroll through this website. And you can see just a much smoother look there on the right. You do get some choppiness here for the Galaxy S8, but nothing that's like unusable. And that's the key thing about the S8 is it's still usable but the S20 is a good upgrade. And so let's just see how fast the camera does open on both three, two, one. And you could see, not bad, both of them very good. I think the S8 might've had that, it was a little bit difficult to see. Let me show you again, three, two, one. And yeah, pretty fast there on both. Now the Galaxy S25 G does have the ability to hold down and start recording just like that. Whereas if you hold down, the S8, you just get the shutter. Now, if you bring the S20 down, you can take shutters like that. So both are gonna be very fast at doing a shutter, but again, you could hold down here to start taking video on the Galaxy S20 just released to stop that video. And testing out the quick launch feature, three, two, one. Both of them equally pretty much fast there. So you're not gonna miss moments on the cameras on either of these, but you're gonna get better results from the S25G. Okay, so the final Geekbench scores are in and you can see it's a substantial win for the Galaxy S20 in both single and multi-core scores. And so we've arrived at the conclusion of the Galaxy S8 versus the S20 speed test. When it comes to performance, 
The S20, of course, as you expected, is faster, but it's more smoother. Like you'll feel the smooth feel of this a lot more than the speed because the S8 is not a slow phone. It just doesn't look quite as smooth. And that's how it would sum these two up. Also, much faster Wi-Fi and 5G performance. It's just newer technology. It's going to be better. But what's more important about this upgrade is that if you loved your S8 body, you'll love the body of this one because it's about the same form factor, about the same size, but it gets a little bit bigger screen because Samsung has eliminated the bezels on the top and bottom and traded it for a little punch hole right there. So for me, I think this is a fantastic upgrade, but I'm gonna do more of a full comparison between these two soon, so be subscribed for that. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, enjoyable, do me a favor, click that like button for me. If you have any other suggestions you wanna see with the S20, let me know down below or the S8. I will catch you all in the next episode. Be sure to be well. Nick here, and peace.